and see what we've got going on. So we have Andrew Jessup on Green White Tokens, Matthew Norton on Band Company. Both players are currently 5-0. and oh. As we look here, it looks like Jessup has a mana advantage with four lands. Could just be that he went first. Mm -hmm. He has a Hangerback Walker, a Sylvan Advocate, and an Oath of Nissa on the battlefield with one in the graveyard. Matthew Norton looks like he has a Duskwatch Recruiter, an Eldrazi Sky Spawner, a 1-1 one -one Scion, and then a few lands. Yeah, so I didn't see the Eldrazi Sky Spawner originally, but it looks like Matthew actually have, has access to eight flyers, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, so, so the we'll see. The, looks like the attack with the Sylvan Advocate uh, is going to be blocked by a Duskwatch Recruiter and a Sky Spawner. So three cards, uh, this is a post-board game, and three cards that Andrew Jessup has in his sideboard that I have to imagine he brought in for this matchup are the two Tragic Arrogance and a Linvala the Preserver. Those are three cards that are excellent in this matchup. Tragic Arrogance is one of the best cards against a Reflector Mage deck because you know, you're trying to play blockers, your opponent bounces them back to your hand, and then you're like, sweep the board. Really happy I have these creatures in my hand that I can play you know, post-sweep. So um, that, can, that can be one of the really powerful plays that Andrip can use to catch up, even if he's fallen behind. Well, Matthew's going to take his turn. He's going to play a land. It looks like it's a promo Evolving Wilds, so he's not going to be able to fire off a Collected Company this turn. Uh, unless he wants to use his Scion. He's not going to, though. He is just going to play another Eldrazi Sky Spawner, keep building that Air Force. Yeah, and the Air Force really is good in this matchup. Things on the ground get so gummed up. Um, attacking in there is usually the, the best option. So he's just going to attack for two, pass back to Andrew Jessup, who's going to level his Hangerback Walker on Matthew's end step. Andrew's going to draw another land for the turn, and it just looks like he has a bunch of land in his hand. Yeah, he really wants some action. That said, hitting your land drops with this deck is really good because if you can kind of do nothing for a little while and then just hit a big Secure the Wastes, cash in a Gideon for an emblem, and just have a huge board presence. So well, Looks like he might have an Archangel Avacyn in his hand. Ooh, that's good. Which is going to be good here on five mana against the, the Air Force of Matthew Norton. Ma Matthew is going to cash in his Evolving Wilds. He's going to get a basic island. And Andrew has to be worried about a Ojitai's command a little bit. These bank company decks usually have them in a very small number, and it looks like Matthew does indeed have access to one um, and another in the sideboard. So I'm sure that's going to be on Andrew's radar, but he'll probably run into it um, because it's just so unlikely. He also has to be worried about Collected Company into Reflector Mage. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just not something I think you can ever afford to play around. Right, exactly. You know, these are, these are things he's worried about. They hope, he hopes they don't happen, but he's going to make you know, his play either way. Now, it looks like Matthew does have a copy of Eldrazi Displacer in his hand, so he could just play the Displacer and be able to bounce that... Uh, Hanger Backwalker? The, either the Hangerback Walker or the Abyssin, even, mm -hmm. uh, if it comes in to try and... Yeah, Eldrazi Displacer is quite good against the Green White Tokens deck. Unfortunately for Matthew, though, since he's behind on land drops, it's going to be hard for him to really dominate the game with Eldrazi Displacer. Eldrazi Displacer kind of takes a lot of mana. Well, there comes the Archangel Abyssin for Andrew Jessup. And Matthew decided to attack with his tokens also, which is kind of interesting. Andrew's going to block his Sky Spawner with an Abyssin and a token with a Hangerback Walker. Looks like combat damage is going to happen. Hmm. So it's kind of an interesting play. I wonder if Matthew has a Tragic Arrogance of his own to cast. That would sort of make sense in this situation. I, could, he, I could see that for sure. Yeah, if he knows he's going to lose the Eldrazi Scions anyway. Yeah, now, it, had he played this Eldrazi Displacer bef before that attack, mm -hmm. like he could have just blinked the Scion that was being blocked, yeah. and just g or the the uh, Sky Spawner that was being blocked, and just like made another Scion and saved saved his creature. Yep. It'd be interesting to see what he follows up with here, that made That's him not want to play the Displacer pre-combat. Yeah. 
That's one of the tricky things about a lot of the creature decks in this format is so many of the creatures have activated abilities and it's really tough to just map out all of the options. Yeah. And you know, I think it's it's going to be more and more common to see players uh, you know, maybe miss a thing or two here and there because there's just so many variables. Well, Matthew is just going to play a Duskwatch Recruiter and pass the turn with three mana available. Andrew's going to pick up another land, so he has four land in his hand, although one of which is Westvale Abbey, so he can use that to start generating tokens here um, if he decides to play that for his turn. But that is going to flip that Duskwatch Recruiter and could potentially give Matthew a very explosive turn if he has some number of uh, Reflector Mages. That said, I think Andrew would rather the Duskwatch Recruiter um, flip just to make it so that Matthew doesn't have access to as much card advantage. Like whenever I look at Duskwatch Recruiter, that's the thing that I'm most worried about is my opponent just drawing a bunch of cards. So it'll be interesting here to see if Andrew just passes the turn without without playing his land. It kind of looked like he was going to gesture that with his hand. No, you got to play the land with uh, all the expensive cards in Andrew's deck. Gonna have a canopy vista, and he's gonna pass. So, one thing that's a an interesting thing to do with this green white token stack is whenever you're playing it, a lot of times you want the last card in your hand to either be some sort of forest or plains, um, because let's say the last card in your hand is Westville Abbey, and you draw Fortified Village, you're gonna have to play that Fortified Village tapped, which is like a little annoying. So, it's like a pretty minor. Um, thing in a situation where you're flooding out like Andrew, but in a lot of other games, like if you're if you're playing it, it uh, matters quite a bit. Well, Duskwatch Recruiter is going to find what looks to be an Eldrazi Displacer, or was uh, that I actually an think that was an Avacyn, yeah. The foil cards are so hard to see. <laughs> All right, this Duskwatch Recruiter is going to flip into a Kralen Horde Horde. And the Avacyn was a, a pretty good draw for, well, it was a great draw for Matthew, but he would have preferred to still have that Duskwatch Recruiter active because if he can just pass the turn, hold his Avacyn mana open, and if uh, Andrew doesn't do anything to just sink his mana into the Duskwatch Recruiter and still hold that Avacyn up, that would be like the ideal scenario for Matthew. Seems like Matthew's hand is just full of gas. He's got a ton of options. Really, I think all he wants now is just more lands. Yeah, uh, although that displacer can allow him to just bounce his sky spawner. You know, yeah. can, can block the Avacyn, save some damage, generate some more mana. Yeah, and in this situation, because the uh, Duskwatch Recruiter flipped with the fifth five mana he has in play, he can actually play the uh, displacer and activate it. So I'm surprised that he's not committing it to the board. I wonder if he's just trying to... Well, he's going to hold up four mana for Abyssin. Yeah. Which is a pretty insane thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Even still, I, I almost wonder if it would be better to save the Abyssin um, so that you get more out of the indestructibility trigger. Whereas the Eldrazi Displacer, you can play it, and um, you know Andrew's just going to be in a really tough spot. Yeah. Like, Andrew's going to be in a tough spot either way, but to milk, like, the maximum value out of your cards, you'd want, um, you know, to make use of that indestructibility trigger. Well, Andrew found another copy of Hangerback Walker, so he's going to play that for three. And if Matthew didn't show Andrew a Avacyn, Andrew might have considered just playing that Hangerback Walker for zero just to flip his Avacyn and wipe Matthew's board. But because, um, you know, Matthew has Avacyn and Andrew knows it, uh, he can't really make that play. Matthew's deciding what he wants to do. He's going to use an Ojitai's command. And this is a great use of Ojitai's command. Even though he has the Eldrazi Displacer in his hand, uh, you know, a big hanger back walker can be kind of tricky to deal with. So. Avacyn is now free to attack for four, now that Matthew used his mana and isn't able to play his own Avacyn. He's going to pass the turn back to Matthew. Yeah, and I really, I really think, it, you know, if, if it was me, which it's not, but if it was me, I really feel like I would get that Eldrazi Displacer online. 
just seems like so little can go wrong. You're just going to be in, you know, such a good spot. Also, if Matthew can find a fourth land, then he can turn on that Sylvan Advocate, which also, yeah. or a sixth land, which might be relevant. Mm -hmm. well, there oh, we, there, we, there go. we go. Cha ching. One thing that's always funny with Sylvan Advocate is you, uh, you got to be careful if you, if your sixth land is like a fetch land, you like go to combat, Sylvan Advocate takes some damage, and if you crack your fetch, Sylvan Advocate will die. Yeah, well, it looks I like. I feel like a lot of people forget that. Looks like he had a prairie stream. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't speak expeditionese. Yeah. <laughs> like myself. Yeah, I do not. We got another Sylvan Advocate. Casual one mana advocate. Let's Come on, see if, play let's the see displacer. If we get this displacer online. Do it. It's so good, too, because it would keep you safe against Dromoka's command. Like, how can he ever fight something when you have Eldrazi Displacer mana open? Exactly. Maybe he just, like, doesn't want to flip his, his Howler back mm -hmm. to a Duskwatch Recruiter. But even then, like... I think yeah. I'd rather have the Duskwatch Recruiter. Displacer just seems so good on this board. Yeah. Because then you can, like... You know, oh, you can do a lot. Well, next turn you can like kill the Hangerback Walker, and then blink the Avacyn so it doesn't transform. And attack with everything. Attack with everything. Yep. Still be able to blink again because you have six mana. Yeah, and if anything goes wrong, you still have the Avacyn to save your guys. It's like Andrew picked up another copy of Oath of Nyssa. And Matthew's playing this in a pretty slow manner. Uh, Andrew has nothing. This is like a good time for Matthew to capitalize on the situation. Obviously, he doesn't know that Andrew has nothing in hand, but Matthew's got to assume that Andrew has like kind of a weak hand considering um, yeah. his recent plays. Well, this is going to flip that Howler as well. Yeah, well, we're as long as he plays spells. another spell. Well, Ooh, Gideon. Looks like we found a Gideon off of the Oath of Nyssa. So I really like um, making an emblem here. Ooh, Abby. That's pretty good. So maybe because of the Abby, he may consider making a uh, knight tokens. But I really like the emblem just because it makes it so that your Avacyn is bigger than your opponent, so they can't Dromoka's command fight yours. Uh, at some point, that Eldrazi, that, that um, Hangerback Walker is likely to die, and if all the tokens are two twos rather than one ones, it's like a pretty big difference. And if you can just top deck a secure the wastes, it's going to be like a monster play. Whereas if you play the Gideon and make a knight, Matthew may be able to engineer a scenario where he's able to kill this Gideon, and uh, only getting a knight out of it isn't like a whole lot of value. Yeah, I mean Eldrazi Displacer seems. Very good against these Gideon Knights anyway. Yeah, it is. Eldrazi Displacers, I mean, I play this Green Red Token deck a lot, and it's one of the cards that I have a harder time with. And a lot of times I'll be in a situation where I only have one removal spell, my opponent will play something, and I'll say to myself, if I kill this, how will I beat a dis uh, Eldrazi Displacer? It's like literally the question that, that I ask myself. And because of that, so often I just like will hold my just removal don't, spells. Just don't kill it. Yeah, until I have like a second one. I mean, sometimes you just got to play it, but you know. Well, Matthew's just going to go ahead and play his own Avacyn. So the thing that I do like about this Archangel Avacyn coming into play here is I'm hoping that means that Matthew's going to play Eldrazi Displacer next turn. <laughs> well, now can't he sacrifice this? Scion yeah, to flip to flip the Avacyn. Yeah, it only it, it doesn't do much for him though. I mean, it'll kill Andrew's knight, knight and put some damage on his Gideon, but it'll kill Matthew's Sky Spawner and um, you know flip Duskwatch Recruiter. So yeah, it looks like he's not. Thankfully, do he it. doesn't do that. <laughs> Now I have to imagine the play is play my Displacer, blink your Avacyn, kill your Gideon. Avacyn's a good card. 
Avacyn's a great card. <laughs> yep. I feel like, so how good do you think Avacyn is if she doesn't have Vigilance? Well, I mean, obviously she's still insane. But yeah, like, she's still great. How far down does the card become without Vigilance? Mm, not that far down. The, what, what's great about Avacyn is she's just such a versatile card, and a lot of times when you have a versatile card, they're either overcosted or they're like kind of weak. Whereas Avacyn is just a, a great threat, um, just being a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, it's great against control decks because it can be a two for one depending on the situation, and uh, it being flash means it's harder for your opponent to play around. And then in the matchups where you're light on removal, she can be a sweeper. So she is just like, in my opinion, one of the most versatile cards in standard, and she breaks the paradigm of versatile cards because she's also very, like, quite powerful. Well, Matthew is just going to play that Displacer and then pass the turn. Yeah, it seems like Matthew's just giving Andrew a ton of respect. I think Matthew thinks that Andrew has some, like, Dromokus commands in hand or something. I think Matthew thinks that Andrew has a decent hand and is trying to play things more slowly and conservatively. Um, and he's giving Andrew a lot of time to make the most of this situation. Well, the trick is that Andrew did not have Dromokus command, yeah. but now he does. Yep. And that's what happens when you give your opponent too much time. Unfortunately, these two players are playing so slow that turns are going to be, um, you know, something that comes into play. And uh, I think that Matthew, if he had taken a more aggressive line, might have been able to close things out. But now it's going to be tough to win before, um, you know, they're forced to draw. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that he actually loses this. Yeah. Um, since this Dromokus command is going to blow out this uh, Eldrazi Displacer activation. So, if it was m me, I feel like you just have to fight the Eldrazi Displacer. Just have to get that off the board. Yeah. Like, put a counter on your Avacyn so it's bigger than your opponent's and then fight your opponent's Eldrazi Displacer. The other thing too here is uh, Andrew has so much mana that he can uh, make some tokens with Wetsvale Abbey and threaten to flip it. And if you ever get a turn where you, uh, you know, sacrifice a bunch of stuff to flip a Westvale Abbey, but you still get to keep an Avacyn in play. It's just like such a impactful thing to do on that yeah. turn. Because you have to flip your Avacyn also. Andrew Jessup is a great player, but um, I've also gotten a draw playing with him. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have Dromoka's Command is going to fight the Hangerback Walker on the Eldrazi Displacer. He's going to put a counter somewhere. Oh, he's going to put a counter on the Eldrazi Displacer and then fight it so that his Hangerback will actually die. So this way, Andrew's going to get a bunch of tokens, which is kind of irrelevant and because be, well, he'll be able his Avacyn's going to flip. He'll be able to flip the Ormondal with those tokens. Yeah, he will be, well, uh, he will be able to flip Ormondal. Wow, so Andrew actually navigated this perfectly. So both Avacyns are going to flip, meaning that even the Sylvan Advocates are going to die, but Andrew is going to be able to sacrifice his tokens to Westvale Abbey, uh, meaning that he's just going to get a lot more out of this than Matthew does. And we are about to see this board get cleaned up real fast. In a moment, we're going to be in a situation where both players have a flipped Avacyn, but Andrew has an Ormond doll, and Matthew has nothing else. So huge, huge play on Andrew's part. It's pretty neat that you can put the counter on your opponent's creature. Good heads up play by Andrew Jessup. Yeah. And Andrew couldn't have fired this off right away. He needed to wait for Matthew to activate that Eldrazi Displacer. Otherwise, Matthew could have you know, used the Eldrazi Displacer in response. 
And this is brutal. And think that Andrew can attack for lethal. Because he's going to be able to make his Gideon a creature, attack with everything. I'm, Matthew's still going to have, um, you know, plays for his turn, but Andrew's got a lot that he's going to be able to attack with on his turn. Are we going to activate our Duskwatch recruiter? And it looks like Matthew sacrificed his Odrazi Cyan, knowing that it was going to die anyway. So save a little bit of mana that way. And I think Matthew did a lot of things right this matchup. But I think if he watches it again, he'll see that he probably gave Andrew a little more respect or maybe had the wrong read on what was Andrew in Andrew's hand and could have played this a, a little bit more aggressively. Yeah. Put a lot of stock in trying to get an Avacyn on the board when an Eldrazi Displacer would have just been insane. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's tough because a lot of times when you, um, you know, analyze your possible plays for a game, you generally want to just play the um, biggest, most powerful spell whenever you have the option to. But the fact that uh, Eldrazi Displacer, you could play it and activate it in the same turn, like you almost want to view it that turn as a really powerful five mana spell, not a three mana spell. Yeah. And I say five mana because the Dust Rush Recruiter was flipped. Well, both Abyssins are going to flip. Yeah, and those Sylvan Advocates got to get out of there. Poor guys. Man, this is this has gone from real weird to real bad real fast. <laughs> yeah, it really seemed like Matthew just had everything going on, but Andrew was just kind of be was able to basically hold him off with a stern gaze, and then Andrew just finally drew something good and had a had a great play to completely change the board state in his favor. Yeah, just even when he had all lands in hand, yep. he still played at the same pace, very deliberate. Um, yeah. In fact, both players played at a very deliberate pace. Yeah, but, for, but Matthew gave him way too much credit. Yeah, for all my years of playing Dromoka's Command, I, uh, even from my view of reading this board, I, I forgot that you could put a plus one, plus one counter on your opponent's guy. It's a play that I avoid at all costs, so <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, maybe I've just blocked it from my mind. Well, he needed some way to make his Hangerback Walker die that turn and also get rid of that Eldrazi yeah. Displacer, and that was the perfect line. Yeah. Getting both Avacyns to flip was perfect. Well, there's a Sylvan Advocate. This is going to pass the turn back. This is turn two for Andrew Jessup, so he's going to get one more turn after this, but plusing that Gideon and crashing with everybody seems to be a good, good thing to do. Oh, yeah. And also, if, if Andrew just draws anything good, um, you know, Matthew's going to be in a really bad spot. Matthew basically has to trade, or excuse me, not trade, but chump the Ormondal with Abyssin, and the Sylvan Advocate has to chump the Gideon. And he just so, then he takes six and goes to one. Yeah, so I don't even know, like, if if Matthew could tutor for the perfect card and put it on top of his deck and draw it every turn, I think he'd, he would, he's still basically drawing dead. Yeah. Oh, we've got a Dromokas command. Oh, there we here. go. So this is going to take care of the Avacyns. It's also going to prevent Andrew from gaining some life. He is going to get a five power Sylvan Advocate. Yep. And I assume that the Sylvan Advocate blocked the Gideon because it is six toughness with the Jamoka's command. I hope so. Yeah. We'll see. Or was there no, did he put the plus one plus one counter on the Avacyn? It almost looks like that's what he did. 
I, yeah, that looks like that's what he did. Just wanted to make sure that Avison 100% died. I guess, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Maybe he just misspoke. Ormondal is going to be real tough to beat here. Does not look like we have any copies of Clip Wings on the sideboard. Yeah, not even like bringing in Clip Wings. It's like so narrow. So I have to imagine that Matthew's going to be scooping up his cards shortly, but this was a, a pretty interesting game. I think that generally speaking, the green-white tokens deck is favored, but I do think that it, it's almost always close. And I really like how Matthew's deck is pairing both Eldrazi Sky Spawner with Avacyn. That's something that we don't see in every band company deck, although we do see it in a lot. And it's a, a pretty powerful interaction that I'm kind of a big fan of. Well, if we have something like Eldrazi Sky Spawner here, um, that could give Matthew enough time to make this game a draw. He is going to gain four life, get another Sylvan Advocate. And draw oh, he's a card. Just, he's just going to draw a card and get a Sylvan Advocate. He really needs, like, land Reflector Mage. That's what <laughs> he needs. Well, we've got Tragic Arrogance. It's not wow. going to do it. Andrew Jessup is going to take that match. Wow, by the skin of his teeth. Two games to one with green white tokens. He had, at one point he had five lands in hand yep. and was way behind on board. Yeah. Matthew gave him the time to draw into the cards he needed and the very turn that he needed, Dramoka's command is a blowout. Yep. He drew it. Yeah. He was able to take advantage of it, putting the counter on his opponent's creature, fighting, flipping his Ormondal. Great there play. Were, there were